Get up off of that thing. A soulful brown ale from Devil May Care Brewing in Winnipeg. This is one of several beers that Devil May Care makes that have a bit of a James Brown theme going on. They describe it as hearty, deep, and full of character. So, today I'm going to uh, carry on a little bit from last Friday. You remember this uh, signal generator that I used to uh, to test the the scope meter, uh, this guy here, uh, and just to provide some waveforms and whatnot. And it seems to be a pretty neat thing. The only downside that I can see with it is it didn't come with a case. So there's nothing to protect it from stray bits of wire and solder floating around on my workbench uh, that might land on the back of it and cause havoc. So I'm going to fix that tonight. And I asked in the other video uh, whether people thought it was a better idea for me to print it or to make more of a homemade old school case, kind of like I did for my little power supply here. Or for my component tester, this is even uglier. But uh, those are things that anybody can throw together. You don't need uh, too many special tools. And you obviously don't need to have a, a 3D printer. So I think by popular demand, that is what I'm going to do. And I dug around in my supplies and I found some sheet styrene. Um, some a couple of narrower strips and then this larger sheet here. This one is like 1.1 millimeters thick, 1.7, 1.8 millimeters thick. So I think I'm going to use this strip since it's already pre-cut. I don't know what it's from for the sides. I'll use this larger but thinner sheet uh, for the back. So first, I'm just going to start off by making a really, really rough drawing of this thing um, so that I can take some measurements and note them down. So the, that is 70.5 millimeters. So we'll call that 71 just because we're not that precise. And lengthwise we are 136. Is it that exact? 130, yeah, we'll call it 136. And then from the end, bottom of the standoffs to the top, there is 24 and a half millimeters. Sure. And then there's this little input uh, for power jack, and we'll worry about that later. We'll just do a cut to fit on that. But initially, uh, that's all we need to start getting uh, start getting started. I'm just going to mark it with my knife here just to get the because this you don't always get a good uh, transfer onto here you probably can't see that there's the mark there I can see it pretty easily and it's got some tactile uh, sense to it so it's pretty easy to find anyways I'm just gonna mark the other side as well and then carry on here and then once you've got your marks laid down you just take an exacto knife I'm using an exacto rather than the scalpel just because it's got a little bit stiffer blade and just score the line you don't have to press too hard as a matter of fact it's better not to so that it doesn't slip and gouge your fingers or go across your workpiece or whatever and just do a handful of uh slices and you can already see it's starting to score i'll just do the same thing crosswise and Let's see, once it starts to score, it'll snap pretty easily along the line. There we go. And that should be the same size as the faceplate there. Plus or minus, pretty close. Close enough anyway. So there's a few different ways that you could transfer the whole locations. I'm just going to use these squares butted up against the base piece. To get it aligned and I'm just going to mark with my pencil that moved I hold that down and mark with my pencil where those are hope they don't move too much now that one back that one in the back corner is going to be hard to do but I'll just line it up off the other ones 
There, you can kind of see where those th first three are. So I'm just going to line up the fourth one using my squares because they will be in a nice straight line. That's going to be close enough, I think. Because I can drill these with a little bit of slop and I can adjust them. This isn't precision engineering, despite the fact that there's calipers involved. So these are M3, standard M3 screw. So I'll just uh, find a drill bit that's big enough for clearance for that. I'll start the holes with my pin vise just to get more control over what's going on drilling into a block of wood because this is a cutting mat not a drilling mat i don't feel like putting holes in it you don't have to use this of course you could just use a drill bit uh, in a drill or you could start the hole this way as well that is just as valid and just as quick and then finish the hole to full size i don't even need that block behind it I do, however, need to charge my battery. My fingers are clear of the hole, don't worry. Let's see if it goes together. Hmm, I think I need to charge my wow stick here. Okay. I think that's going to work. Okay, there we go. And it is... Is it square? No. No, it isn't. Why isn't it? Because it's asymmetrical. And I put this on upside down. Okay, there we go. And that lines up pretty close. All right, next, sides. So what I need for the sides is about 27.8 millimeters. Unfortunately, these pieces that I've got, these strips, which I thought were going to be right, but not quite. They're 32 millimeters. So I need to take a little bit off the sides. I could just uh, mark it and score it uh, the same as I did before with my knife and a ruler. But I think I'm going to get a little bit fancier here. I've got this tr tool here which is uh, a balsa airplane uh, modeler's tool. It's called the balsa stripper. It is designed for making strips of balsa wood out of larger pieces. It's just got a stop block here and an adjustment and a standard X-Acto number 11 blade. And you just run it along an edge and it makes a cut. And, or in the case of styrene, it scores it. So I'm just going to set it to where my mark is and run it along there and just pull it along and as long as you don't uh, put your hand way around there you're not at any danger of cutting yourself nice repeatable parallel cuts I'm just going to do this about 30 times and snap it off the same as I showed you with that other uh, piece of styrene. There you go. That's a little bit rough, but I can, uh, I can just clean up the edge a little bit with my knife and it'll be excellent to work with. So there you go. One strip. And I will save that in the plastic drawer for other projects in the future. I don't know what yet, but you never know. So now I'm just going to start from one end and cut to fit. And I think I will start, I will do the first one flush with the ends and the, the, the uh, long sides will overlap those. So again, I'll just mark it here with my knife, which is sharper than any of the pencils. I will 
cut that or mark that off at 90 degrees. Again, being careful not to cut into my hand. I'm cutting very, very shallow cuts. So I don't have a lot of pressure on there. Yeah, there's a score line and I will just do what I have done a couple other times. That's weird. This blade keeps loosening up on me. Anyways, I'm going to go all the way around there and cut off uh, four pieces for the sides. Uh, the two ends and the two, uh, two sides. And I will be back momentarily. Okay, there is my pieces. One of them is just a hair short. I got a couple little scraps left over, but I will persevere. So in order to glue these up, I'm going to use a solvent glue for this uh, polystyrene. Uh, but I don't want to get it onto my bench here because it will eat through the, uh, through the thing, the cutting mat. So I'm going to use this piece of glass tile here. And I'm not going to use the mirrored side because that will be just rude. So I will use the back side of it. That's still going to be dead flat. So I won't have to worry about that. And uh, yeah, I can just put these pieces in. And I think I'll use that one there. And to hold them in place, I will just use my squares here. I think that should work just peachy keen. And I'll just use my styrene solvent glue good old testers plastic cement and i'll gob that onto the corner there now that stuff's not going to attack this glass that i've got underneath here so i'm safe there i can rotate the whole thing around and put some down there as well i can't get at the inside corner but that's okay for now I am going to reinforce it. I'm just going to make some little triangles out of the off cuts and reinforce it. But I'm going to do that later once that sets up. Actually, I'm just going to cut some pieces off this little leftover strip and use them as blocking to put in there. I think that'll work just as well, possibly even better. And I just have to get it onto the crack and it sort of wicks in around it. I don't have to get too carried away brushing it in. And this is where the weighting comes in. Just to let that set up, don't mess around with it. But I think I know how to spend some time uh, waiting. Okay, some time has passed and that has set up a little bit. Move that out of the way and I'll just spin this whole arrangement around. I think in preparation for that, I'll just set one of those in there. Just kind of roughly flush it up and stick it down. I mean, woodworkers will probably be familiar with putting cleat, little cleats like that in for nailing and whatnot. This is not that much different. Not sure if you can see that, but I can see a little bit of squeeze out of the... Uh, of the solvent glue on the back so i'll just hold that for a bit with the tweezers until it sets up and that'll make a good gluing surface and then i'll repeat further over uh, before i put the second side on third side okay i added another one of these little cleats on the end here too and you can see the ones on the sides and i remembered that i had these little reverse acting uh tweezers which really helped uh, to act as clamps in there these and these all came from uh, sets of tweezers that i got from princess auto americans should be able to find exactly the same thing for super cheap at harbor freight this time i've got a lot more gluing surface to play with so i'm just going to put some on there initially and then wick it in from the corners once this is in place Uh, maybe one behind it. Yeah, that's better. 
look some glue into that corner there and some down at this end and I think I can reach into where that little block is but if not I'll uh once I've got these three sides on and and firm I'll pop actually no I'll I'll put this end piece on next and I think I'm not going to go all the way across and wrap right around that because if I do then I won't be able to get this out so I'm just going to use one of these shorter pieces and just put it right in there and actually there's no reason I can't do that right now is there except for I don't have anything weighty to put up against it that's an oversight all right I found a little bit more weight to add to my project here time has passed and the glue has dried I'm going to just flip it up on edge here and kind of seal these seams in the same way as I did with the with the other with the other pieces and uh, yeah more gluing more weeding okay it is the next day I've put some more uh, solvent glue around the edges and used my collection of gravity clamps so it is fairly well secured. I think one more thing that I might do just to strengthen it a little bit is put some of these little pieces on the inside corners and glue them in. Um, but for now let's just pull the screws and make sure that we didn't do something stupid can it still come out? Yes, it can. Okay. I might actually put some uh, reinforcement around those edges too. I mean, none of this is difficult. It's just, it's a little time consuming. And the time consuming part isn't even the, the building. It is simply the waiting for the glue to dry. Time has passed and this glue seems to be set up again. And set up isn't exactly the right term. It's a solvent, so basically it's flashed off the uh the volatiles and uh and has remelted and resolidified again, mostly. So just make sure this guy still fits around those, and it seems to. I'll pop a couple of screws in. Yeah, I didn't get that screw perfect, that screw hole perfectly aligned the first time, but that's okay. I can live with that. This little wow stick isn't super torquey, but when the uh, when the screw is a, a nice sort of loose, easy finger fit, it works pretty well. Two screws is enough. So there we go. Now then, it's uh. It wasn't that hard to put together. As I said before, the the most time consuming part was just waiting for the glue to dry. And yeah, I rushed this so it's not perfect. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, just sort of file the corners and round them over a little bit, make it a little bit smoother. You could paint it if you want it to look a little bit nicer. I'm not going to, I mean, rough and ready is a lot more my style around here anyway. You could, I suppose, order some cheap knockoff stickers from eBay and decorate it if you wanted to. You could easily do that or paint or whatever or just leave it like it is as I'm doing. Or you could 3D print yourself a case, which isn't all that difficult if you're uh, good with your measurements. And as you can see, I wasn't. Um, and that's why I am not going to be publishing the STL file for this. But that also does the job quite nicely. I'm not sure which one I'll, uh, which one I'll use ongoing. Um, I guess we'll find out the next time we see this, this counter, uh, signal generator show up in a, in a video. So anyway, there you go. There's a couple of options for cheap and relatively easy um, case for pretty much any kind of a project really as I said I've uh, done this kind of a case before um, just to keep the internal gubbins from uh, collecting random bits of wire and short circuits and stuff like that 
If you're equipped and you're skilled, that's not a bad way to go. Especially if you're more skilled at uh, measuring in CAD than I am. Um, if you don't have a lot of tools, this is a perfectly valid way to do it with just about any kind of uh, plastic that you, can, that you can find. Or as I did with this one, I don't even know what this kind of plastic is, uh, but the only glue that would stick to it is hot melt. So that's what I did for that guy. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I always appreciate that. I, I realize this isn't, uh, isn't the most technical of videos, but that happens sometimes. Um, questions and comments down below in the comments section. Um, if you're curious about, uh, the signal generator, I'll put a link to the previous video where I looked at it a little bit more carefully and I'll put a, a link to Banggood for that one. And for this well stick uh, powered screwdriver, this is one of the first times I've actually used it. Yeah, I guess that's everything. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.